Hey guys, welcome back to Bear Mountain Builds, and today I'm gonna to show you how I built these beautiful matched grain barn doors. Hey guys, welcome back to Bear Mountain Builds. I'm Zach. Now, I just finished remodeling this mudroom here, and I have a gaping hole for a closet right now. So I need to put some doors on this. So today I'm gonna to be building some match grain birch barn doors. Let's get started. I have a piece of three quarter inch sanded plywood that's gonna be the back side of my door and a piece of three quarter inch birch veneer plywood that's gonna be the front side. And I'm gonna be laminating these two pieces together. Now, let's keep going. Okay, I got my two pieces of plywood all glued and clamped down. I actually ended up using my old doors from the closet before, which are made of like a particle board or something, but they're super heavy, so they're really great. And also remember these, because I have another project coming where I'm gonna turn these two into a desk, which is gonna be great. Now, just time to wait for this glue to dry up and we'll get this thing trimmed up. All right, I just finished taking all the clamps off and the two sheets are looking super good. They're really flat thanks to the assembly table and they're really heavy, which is great because I really want my doors to be heavy and solid. Now I'm moving on to using my circular saw to take just a sliver off on my four edges. That way my two sheets of plywood are gonna be completely flush and square to each other. It'll be great. And then we're gonna bifurcate this bad boy. Let's keep going. I flipped the plywood so the veneer is face down. That way the saw teeth are coming up into the veneer, preventing blowout. So when I hang my doors, I want the top of the doors to be 85 and a half inches from the floor. One thing I gotta keep in mind is I need to leave a half inch gap between the bottom of my door and my floor. And I'm adding a piece of quarter inch trim on the bottom and the top of my door. That means I have to cut my blanks out to 84 and a half inches. Now let's keep going. All right, so I got the door blanks all cut out and I wanted to take a moment just to kind of show you what this matched grain looks like on these two doors. It looks really great and it's gonna pop even more with poly. And the best part is these are super easy to do. All it is is just two pieces of plywood glued together and a cut right down the middle. Now we're gonna be moving on to putting the trim on. So I'm gonna be using some three inch maple baseboard. It has a little bit of a ridge on this backside. So I'm gonna run this through my planer to get this all flat. I'll strip it down to the thickness of my door and then cut it to length and then glue and nail it in place. Now, let's keep going. I'm leaving my trim oversized, then cutting it flush with a pull saw.
I filled all my brad nail holes with wood filler and sanded them flush. The edges of the trim are pretty sharp, so I'm using a sanding block to round the edge. All right, so I have the trim all mounted up on both doors and I've sanded everything down to 240 grit. That means I'm ready to put some poly on this thing. So I did a little bit of testing over here. So on the left, I have a warm oil-based semi-gloss and on the right, I have a water-based crystal clear semi-gloss. And I did kind of a comparison between the two with my off cuts. Now, the oil-based is just a little bit too rich for me. It, it looks pretty good, but I don't think it's gonna match the room very well. It's got a little bit of yellow in here, so I'm not a huge fan of it. But my water-based, this keeps kind of the natural wood color, but it still brings out the grain really well. So I think this is what I'm gonna go with. It looks super good. Can't wait to get this thing on. Now, let's get this poly on these doors and hit the like button and subscribe. Let's keep going. All right, so I got one coat of poly done on this one. I wanted to kind of show you guys how big of a difference poly makes. It looks super good. Can't wait to get these both all polyed up. So now I'm gonna let this dry, then I'm gonna sand it with 240 one more time and put my second and final coat on that and do the same over here. Let's keep going. All right, so while I have my doors drying, I'm gonna be moving on to building out my track. So I have this maple board that's gonna be the ledger board for the doors. It's 10 feet right now, so I'm gonna cut this down to fit on my wall and then I have my track already put together like this. First, I have eight studs on my wall, so I'm gonna pre-drill two holes for every stud on my ledger board with my countersunk bit. And then I'm gonna lay my track down on top of my ledger board, mark out all the hole locations, and then I'll pre-drill those. Once I have my ledger board in place, it'll be super easy to mount this thing up. Now let's keep going. I realized the bit on my countersink was a bit too big for my screws, so I ended up drilling the countersinks the old fashioned way. You might think I have terrible aim since I'm missing my circles completely, but actually I realized my track wasn't centered originally, so I remarked and then sanded those away after. I figured out that if I used my door plus a quarter inch spacer, I could set my ledger board on top in the correct spot and screw it into the wall. In order to not strip out my lag screws, I brought them to final torque by hand. All right, so I got my ledger board and my track all mounted up. Now, usually people actually paint their ledger board the same color as their wall. That way it kind of blends in with everything and you don't really see it as much, but I kind of like this brushed metal with the maple board. I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna stick with it until I get my doors hung up there and I'll make my final decision then, but I think it's looking pretty sweet right now. Now I'm gonna head back over to the shop and attach my hangers to the doors and we'll get these things hung up. So my hardware does give dimensions for the hole positions right here. I went ahead already and made a template for my holes for the hanger. So all I have to do is take this, butt it up into the corner right here, and then I have a backer piece that's gonna go on the opposite side. That's just gonna prevent blowout for when I'm doing my drilling. So I'll clamp this all in place drill these holes, and then slap these bad boys on. Now, let's keep going.
All right, so I just got done doing the test fit for both these doors and I did a few fine adjustments so they just match well and they rolled really well, but they're all good to go. So now I just have two last things to do. So one, I have this little bumper thing that goes on the top of the door and that just makes it so the doors can't pop off vertically. And then the other thing is I have to route out a channel that's a quarter inch wide along the bottom of both these doors to fit this through, that just locks into the ground so that way they don't swing back and forth. So when I put that bottom trim on, I kind of forgot that I was gonna be routing out a channel there. So there's a bunch of brad nails right through the middle of it, but I still gotta route out that channel. So there might be some fireworks, so I'll try to get a good angle. Now, let's keep going. All right, it's time to put the final piece on these doors, the door handles. Now, here's what I'm doing. Now, here's what I'm doing. I've repurposed my old template I used for my hangers to now have holes for my door handles. I made a spacer that's 39 inches long to set the height for my door handles, and then these holes are two inches in. Now, one thing to note is these are my screws for the door handles, and they are the exact same length as the thickness of my door, which means I'm gonna have to put a quarter inch bore on the backside just so these can fit all the way up in there and then get into my handles. And with that, these doors are done. These barn doors are super simple to make and they turned out great. It really is amazing what you can do with a single piece of birch plywood. Now, as always, hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all my videos. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button for me. It helps me out a ton. And leave a comment. Your comments are amazing and I love reading them. They're super helpful. Now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.